Headshot photographers, your personality is everything. One of the most overlooked yet crucial aspects of becoming a successful headshot and portrait photographer is the photographer's personality. In fact, I would argue that your personality as a photographer can be the determining factor in success when working with clients. It's important to begin by defining the word personality since it can have a number of meanings. Often you'll hear people say things like, she has a great personality or I like his personality, but this is not what I mean by the term. Miriam Webster defines personality as, quote, the totality of an individual's behavioral and emotional characteristics. And this is more or less what I'm referring to. So let me explain. When I began my headshot journey, I was in fear, real palpable fear of taking a photo of someone else, especially a stranger. Overcoming this fear will be one of the first and the greatest challenges for those of you who wish to become headshot and portrait artists. And as I was learning from one of the best and most extroverted personalities in the business, Peter Hurley, I naturally imitated Peter's personality. I imitated his jokes, his demeanor, and even tried to use some of his signature expressions. But I quickly found that it just didn't work. First of all, I felt sort of like a caricature of myself, ungenuine, unoriginal, and phony. And I felt this way because I was being all of those things. Thankfully, I realized this sort of early on, and I realized that trying to be someone else's personality was the wrong method, and I instead began to be myself. Now, anyone who knows me knows that I'm pretty much an extrovert as well, so it was easy for me to begin connecting with my clients in my own way. But as I began to observe other successful photographers, some of whom are very quiet and introverted, I learned a valuable lesson, which is the point of this video. I realized that they didn't try to be someone else. They instead became confident in their own unique personality, whether it was boisterous or quiet, whether jumping around the studio or standing more or less in one spot, yet they were all successful. The reason I say that personality is everything is because most people can smell a phony from a mile away. Being fake is not only easy to recognize, but also a surefire way towards failure because the last thing people want to do is work with a phony, especially when their reputation, their actual image, and their cold hard cash are on the line. I often attend photography clinics and workshops, and it's easy to see who the newbies are because they try so very hard to create some kind of emotional response from their subject. They tell jokes that are just forced and painful. They say strange things that make no sense and just confuse those around them. Or they just have a sort of panicked, nervous air about them. And they're not fooling anyone, least of all the subject. And it shows very clearly and unfortunately in the photos they create. The main point of this video is not to discourage anyone or to make people feel like they don't have the personality to be a great photographer. Photographer. My goal is actually the exact opposite as I want to inspire you to embrace being you. The moment you begin to be genuine, be yourself and remove the facade is the very moment your clients will begin to connect with you. And this invariably leads to excellent photos. The strange thing about all of this is that removing the facade and being yourself is a process. It's not done in one day. And in fact, you need to spend a lot of time photographing people for your unique personality as a photographer to develop and grow. Once you've done this, however, you will find a new level of confidence and joy in photographing people. And the fear and trepidation that you once had will be replaced with feelings of confidence and even fun at the thought of capturing beautiful images of another individual. In our modern, digitally overwhelmed society, it's easy to seem like a grain of sand on the seashore, like just another cog in a wheel that perhaps no one ever notices. We all feel like this at times, so it's important for us to remind ourselves that we are, in fact, unique beings. This means that only you can can create certain images. If I were to photograph the same person, the image would be different, even if we use the same gear, because you and I are different. And this should be a very encouraging thought as we all grow as photographers, since each day and each photo shoot is another opportunity for us to continue not only refining our skills, but also to continue breaking free of any facades we may have. 
I decided a year or so ago that I needed to care less and less about what people thought about me in order to be me. Not the people who matter, of course, like my family, but you know, people online, people in society, that sort of thing. Soon after that, I was hired as a staff writer by F-Stoppers and boy, did I get my wish. At first, the comment sections destroyed me as every negative, hateful, and insulting comment just cut deep into me. It didn't take long though for me to stop caring and stop responding to the trolls. And you know, what it was a very freeing experience granted when someone posts a hateful comment on one of my articles and videos it still bothers me but not nearly as much as it used to ironically most of the time the people who were the most critical have the worst work or no work at all online. And I think that this is also extremely telling. I realized recently that as I scrolled through Instagram stories, I would find myself rolling my eyes at certain people at, just because they seemed fake to me, even though I don't know them at all. And I learned a valuable lesson from this. First, if I'm rolling my eyes at someone else, then surely there are many people rolling their eyes at me as well. Second, who cares? One final thought. I think that this is all summed up pretty nicely by motivational speaker Bob Proctor, who once said, if I want to be free, I got to be me.